the investment community uh, was following the elections very closely. Now that the ruling party has won a majority, it must be quite a, a relief, is it? Thank you, House Linda. Um, I would say that, that our members' reaction is, is that this is reaffirmation that there will be policy continuity in the years ahead and that the factors that make Singapore such an attractive place for investors will remain in place. Uh, well, one of the issues being debated during the election period was foreign talent and also foreign workers in the country. Surely companies, even American companies, were watching that issue very closely. Well, we've all been watching that issue very closely for the last four or five years. <laughs> And as a matter of fact, we did a special SG survey of our members to find out what some of the leading issues were. And hands down, the leading concern is will they be able to locate the Singaporean talent they will need, not just to man the entry level of their companies, but to lead their companies in the, in the years and decades ahead. Is there a sense that Singapore will provide the talent that's needed for American companies going forward? And the further up you go, the less confidence there is that there will be enough Singaporeans to fill all the jobs. This is a very positive investment climate, and the demand for manpower is almost insatiable. And because of the nature of our investments, a lot of corporate headquarters, a lot of Asia-Pacific headquarters functions being carried out here, we have perhaps a disproportionate demand for people who are very highly skilled, very professional, and very experienced. Cost is also a huge issue for not just MNCs, but SMEs. Mm -hmm. uh, what anecdotal evidence is there when you speak to the American firms and other foreign companies? I mean, how concerned are they about rising costs in operating in Singapore? Well, I think every investor here is very concerned about the cost of doing business. There's two ways of looking at it. From one side, the cost of manpower would be higher than it would be in many neighboring economies, but the productivity level is so much higher that it's actually a net benefit to operate here. Other costs of doing business, such as, as rents for office space and for residences, have been coming down, um, and the business community is very willing to have a dialogue with the government of Singapore to discuss ways that we can progress that issue still further. Well, such issues, are they? will they stand in the way of American companies? investing in Singapore for the longer term? I don't think so. Um, one of our points of pride is that we are investors. We've been here for decades and some of our companies have been here for over a century. And what investors are looking for here is the same thing they look for in any country that they invest in. They're looking for predictability, transparency, rule of law, protection of intellectual property, availability of manpower. Um, all the assets that Singapore offers um, are the same things that brought them here in the years past and continue to bring American investors to Singapore. Well, we're closely watching the new cabinet that will be formed within the next two weeks. If there is any policy change you would like to see, is there any? What would that be? I think we are not looking so much at policy change, although, of course, people would love to have a little lightening up on the manpower restrictions. <laughs> um, but in full understanding that manpower who gets to come in as a foreigner is completely the prerogative of the host government. Um, what we would like to see is a continuation of the very powerful dialogue that we have been able to have with the government of Singapore so that when there are questions, uncertainties or issues, we talk them through.